Easy explain evolutionary patterns. What are those? So, so far we've gone over the evolutionary mechanisms, which are looking at how evolution works at the genetic scale, very small scale, right? Just looking at a individual or a population's fitness to their environment. Then we've also looked at speciation, that evolutionary process of how given isolation barriers and a lot of time, we can actually see new species emerge. But now we're going to come to these patterns, these really big picture trends that if we follow these populations, if we follow these species for a really long time, over generations and generations, over decades or even centuries, kind of what we're going to start to see happen uh, at the large scale, big picture. We, ha we have some names for these things. So there's going to be seven of them, and some of them are pretty closely related. They're almost like opposites in a sense. So we're just going to start going through them. Uh, I'll try to group them in the way that they're kind of related. So the first two here, gradualism and punctuated equilibrium, they're kind of related in a way. Uh, so if you look at the, the pattern of gradualism, that's very Darwinian, right? This is what he first assumed and observed, that evolution happens very slowly in very small steps over a very long time, right? It's gradual. But this can be contrasted with punctuated equilibrium, which happens sometimes, right? So where the species, the gene pool could be at equilibrium, it could be perfectly balanced, not a lot of change happening for a very long time. But then some kind of event happens that punctuates that stability, that equilibrium. And then in a very short amount of time, we're going to see a lot of change in the gene pool. right? So kind of the opposite of gradualism, if it helps for you to think about it that way. Uh, next, we're going to move down to convergent and divergent evolution. Uh, and these are, again, kind of opposite patterns, right? If you think about how evolution looks, uh, let's start with convergent so we're going to be converging, meaning we're going to be kind of coming together in a sense. We have two different organisms becoming more similar, and this is usually due to environmental pressures. Think of a dolphin, which is a mammal, and a shark, which is a fish, right? They have very different ancestors, but over time, given similar environments and having to be top predators in those environments, they were favored to have similar body shapes, right? A dolphin's body looks a lot like a shark's body. So over time, they've gone through convergent evolution. They've become more similar. And that's in contrast to divergent, becoming more different. We're diverging, right? We actually started with the same ancestor at some point a long, long time ago. We shared a common ancestor. And over time, probably based on different environments now, we've become more different. So in this case, think of the woolly mammoth versus modern elephants. Modern elephants don't have hair like that all anymore. Uh, and Darwin also saw this too, right? He saw all the finches based on the Galapagos Island that he found them on were becoming different based on the food they had, uh, how available water was, et cetera, et cetera. So those two are also related as well. Uh, next, we're going to move into co-evolution. This one kind of stands on its own, right? This is actually very unique, and you see a lot of this happening in ecology when we start to look at community relationships like mutualism and parasitism. But coevolution is when you have two species that re live really close together. I mean, this can be like on top of each other. This can even be inside of each other in the case of parasites. And they're going to be influencing each other's evolutions. This is usually beneficial for at least one that's involved. Not always, though. Uh, there's a lot of examples in this if you, you know, go to Google and start looking these up. Uh, just species starting to influence each other's evolution. We call that coevolution. And finally, if you're not evolving, you're probably going extinct. Uh, those are the last examples here. So there's two types of extinction. This can really happen in one of two ways. There's gradual extinction, which is sometimes referred to background extinction. But I don't like that term because that implies that it's happening in the background and we don't care about it. But, you know, extinction should be a really high level concern of ours. Uh, so gradual extinction is kind of like gradualism as an evolutionary pattern. Uh, it's just very slow and steady, right? It's gradual. Uh, slowly, you know, over a long period of time, this species is just not diverse enough in its gene pool. It can adapt fast enough from generation to generation based on changing environmental factors. So it's gradually going extinct. And that's in contrast to mass extinction, right? We've had a few of these in our history uh, based on who you ask. It's either five or six. Um, but this is when you use a lot of species all in a very short amount of time usually due to some mass catastrophic event, right? Like some kind of meteor impact, volcanic eruption. Um, so those are the two different types of extinction, gradual versus mass. We can kind of go back and look at all seven here. Uh, hopefully this helps. 
Best of luck on your quiz or test.